This E3 demo is presented by State Farm. All right, everyone, E3, Red 3 Games, Pivot Touch Booth. This uh, game we're about to see next um, really is one of, what, one of the most unique offerings out here on the floor. I'm joined by Eric Studer, who's Senior Design Director. Senior Design Producer. Senior Design Producer, my, my, my apologies. And no this worries. is a murdered soul suspect. You're attempting to do what I think is probably one of the toughest types of games to make, and that's the detective game. It sounds perfect, but trying to make a game out of that can be quite challenging. What's 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 kind of your vision? We know it involves ghosts and stuff like that. Yeah. We'll see that in the demo. Yeah, yeah. But kind of how are you approaching the idea of, of being a detective? Our hope is is that uh, as the player does these investigations, they're going to really enjoy the new perspective on the whole mechanic because your ghosts you can't interact with uh, regular objects easily. So you have to use your ghost abilities to actually really figure out where all clues are. So you can possess people, you can look through their eyes, you can influence their thoughts. You can actually reveal memories back into the dust, which is the, the realm that our character exists in. And then you can examine those memories to get information from them. Um, all of this works towards sort of piecing together a storyline that's really rich with characters, really rich with a lot of growth from the protagonist especially, uh, in a quest to solve his own murder. All right, well, let's start taking a look at murder. Sure. Now, what I think has always been so tricky when it comes to detective is that yeah. how do you give the player the sense of discovery? Because yeah. you can really tell that the, the designer, whoever made this, knows exactly what's supposed to happen. You don't have that sense of wow. I mean, how are you addressing that? It's, I mean, it's a complicated process. You don't want to, you don't want to overwhelm the player right out of the gate, right? So we try to start the, the game off a little bit simpler. So the demo that we're showing here is pretty early in the game. And the games, as a result, tend to be a little bit more focused on understanding mechanics, understanding Ronan's uh, thought process. Mm -hmm. Then, as you work your way through the game, there's a lot of play balancing that goes into making sure that the complexity of the investigations are growing with player experience. Because they're going to get comfortable with the mechanics, you have to make sure that the complexity of the investigations matches their expertise. Now, is, is, is this a case where, to advance the story, to advance the game, you have to kind of get the clue right? or? Can you actually get things wrong? You can get things wrong, but because we have a very specific story we want to tell, the conclusion of every investigation is the same. Right, Th that makes sense. So, you want to walk us through some of the stuff that's happening here? Sure, so we're getting introduced to a couple of critical characters. The guy on the that's picking up the hat right now is Ronan's brother-in-law, Rex. Now, Rex is going to play a critical part in, in Ronan working his way towards solving his own killer. This is someone he's got a really close relationship in life, and that relationship will, in a sense, continue as, you, as Ronan crosses path with him over the course of the game. So, um, yeah, he's standing over his dead body. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which is, yeah, all of us know that feeling. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> um, how do you, I mean, do you even, do you explain away how the spirit world exists and like why, I don't know if he's unique yeah. to that or if there are other ghosts. Everyone who dies is a ghost. No, so the dusk is, is a kind of a complex place and we have a really rich fiction for it. So as a general rule, the dusk exists as a result of human suffering. So when someone dies or suffers some sort of great trauma, they give off an energy which leaves an imprint in this limbo realm. And you'll see ghosts show up in it as a result. You'll see objects show up in it as a result as it's associated with that trauma. So, who was he when he was living? Ronan actually grew up as the son of two thieves. Um, he lived as a criminal for most of his life, but eventually he met someone he really cared about and it completely changed his perspective on the world. What he ended up doing is going straight and becoming a cop on the Salem Police Department, which what he does is he brings that experience in this dichotomy of his existence with him while he's investigating crime scenes. Uh, so, so you're saying it's Salem. Is, is, yeah. is this Salem as in the witch trials? Salem, Massachusetts is where we're, where we're setting the game, yeah. A fictionalized version of it. Oh, of course, but I mean, does, does that mean that you're drawing in sort of the stories of some of the less pleasant things that happened there about 300 years ago? <laughs> Salem has a very rich supernatural history. Uh, and on top of that, the, the fact that it's set in a small New England town is, is really a really great sort of aesthetic yeah. that really fits the story of the the, sto the the setting of the story we're trying to tell. It's, it's kind of like the, the Eldritch and the Arcane, yeah. all the HP Lovecraft about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. So uh, right here, yep. I, I, you, you definitely have an aesthetic choice about how you're even kind of giving missions and goals for yes, the player. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. So as we're walking around, you're seeing some of the ghosts, you're seeing this destroyed building. So you know that there's a lot of people who either died or were hurt as that building collapsed. And that's what drew that into this uh, sort of limbo realm. Uh, you'll notice that he's freely passing through everything. As a ghost, Ronan doesn't really interact much with the living world directly. Uh, not much blocks his direction. 
You're also seeing this text that's floating in the ground. Again, he's a ghost, so he can't write things down in a notebook. It's not easy for him to take notes. And so the way that we're representing this is we're using his sort of mind's eye. Uh -huh. So these games you're seeing as well also as a representation of his mind's eye. So he's trying to draw logical conclusions from this. And you're seeing that he's, he's remembering that he shot after he fell from this window by his killer. And you get this flashback of the event. So I'm, I'm curious, and, and, and this pertains to what we were talking yeah, about earlier. Yeah. What if you got that wrong? What happens so, there? Because it's Ronan trying to find the logical conclusion here, he'll go, no, that doesn't make any sense. And we'll give the player the opportunity to try got again. It. Now you probably saw some experience points up there, some badges showing up. We have a system that we want to encourage the player to think positively and try to be proactively smart about it. So we're trying to emphasizing rewarding success rather than punishing failure. So at least when you're making the decision, say with what we just saw right there, you want to get it right on the first try. Yeah, there absolutely. is a reward system. Oh, okay. absolutely, absolutely. So here now Ronan is uh, actually possessing a human. You can't directly control humans while you're possessing them, but he's looking through his eyes right now. He's trying to find critical information that can help him along with the investigation. So I was about to say, can, can you take over here with the point where you can make them move around and make them do things? We have uh, the ability to sort of influence their thought and influence their behavior in a very limited capacity. Okay. But the, the point of, of, uh, of Ronan's ability as a possession is, is used mostly for an investigation, mostly as a strategy for combat, which you'll see later in the demo. Well, I was just thinking that because your main character, the one that you're controlling, is a ghost, I assume you can save a little bit on the physics budget. Yeah. Because <laughs> you're not knocking over a bunch of objects in the world. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't hit many things. So you see here he's actually listening on a conversation that was inaudible otherwise. Mm -hmm. So you know you have a lot of these indirect abilities to interact with the living world, but it's, it's that's the double-edged sword of being a ghost, right? So you can't directly influence what's happening around you, so you have to think in, in abstract ways and lateral ways to figure out how to leverage your abilities to to solve these, these solve these crimes. Well, I mean, this is a I mean, probably, I, 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 I even hate using the term, it, the closest corollary in game design would be like the old ad adventure games, where you're kind of, you know, you're, you're looking around the world and stuff. How do you, though, educate the player to start thinking in a, in a, what is a very new way in this game? Yeah. Well, again, it's, you know, this is the first investigation, and so you'll see that the puzzles here were not really asking the player to make these really great abstract leaks. Leaps. We want them to go, oh, I understand. I can actually possess people. I can find other ways about going around this investigation. And we experiment with that a lot here, and then you'll see it again once we get to the fourth floor of the apartment. Um, the goal is really is to get the co player comfortable with being a ghost and not having the usual tools that you would expect in a game like this. Okay, so once again, we're looking at sort of some options here. Yeah, so he's actually right now influencing the, 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 the thought process of this woman. We're getting her to think about something. She's so um, distraught by what she saw, she can't communicate clearly to the cop. But I can read her mind and then get information I wouldn't be able to get otherwise. So that's the other thing is that he, while he might be able to solve who killed him, he can't exactly exact justice on him. He has to be able to influence all the people around him. And that's one of the largest challenges for the character is that he believes that his unfinished business is to solve his own murder, right? And that's how you move on as a ghost. But how do you do that? And and that's a critical component of the project. I mean, do, do you sort of deal with, I guess, his afterlife emotional state? You know, you know, the, the, does, does he deal with the sense of loss? I mean, he definitely comes across as a hard-boiled gentleman. Yeah, absolutely. We, we talk about uh, his sort of coming to terms with being trapped in this space. And he, he, he does mask it a lot because he is sort of this very sarcastic on the outside guy. But yes, he does struggle with the fact that he's got all these relationships that he's not really a part of anymore. How do you deal with sort of the, the characters acting? I mean, you're spending a lot of time in this story with this one character. Is there, was, was there motion capture? Was there performance capture? Yes, we had uh, full body motion capture and full facial motion capture. So it's really great too, the, uh, the actor who portrays Ronan, Jason Brooks, is this very, very physical, he's got this amazing body language. And using the motion capture, we really get to capture a lot of the sort of character he brings just to Ronan naturally through his performance. So um, I, it looks like he's about to go into the apartment. Yeah, and yeah. Um, Ghosts tend to pass through walls. We've already seen it pass through objects, but yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 I'm, I'm leading you here. Yeah, that yeah. is an issue in, the, in this part of the game. Yeah, so fictionally speaking, um, the town of Salem, again, it goes back to that supernatural origins. They actually, to prevent spirits from freely entering, evil spirits from freely entering and exiting places, they actually uh, christen the locations. They christen the foundations of the buildings. What this does is it creates a supernatural barrier that actually, it's one of the few things in the living world that actually prevents ghosts from freely entering and exiting. 
it, 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 it's a very good fiction for what probably is also a technical <laughs> inhibition. <laughs> it's, it's a technical issue, but it's also a really great way to, uh, to redirect traversal. Like, it's a great way to come up with good traversal puzzles. Okay, that's a very good point. And then also, if you know, when, when you're in this investigation, you don't want your, your, your player going so far astray that yeah. they're losing sight of what they have to oh, do. Oh, absolutely. You, 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 you absolutely. want to keep them engaged yes, absolutely. throughout it. Absolutely. But once he's inside an edifice, he does get to move through walls Oh, you'll see that just offices, here in like a that. second. Yeah, he, he's not bound pretty much by any physical object in, in the spaces once he's inside of a building. Um, he's going to start investigating the apartment, and as the, we play through the demo here, you're going to see him start to see uh, objects that he can interact with. He can kind of snoop on other ghosts that are moving around here. So you'll see him walk inside this wall here in just a moment. So and I mean, that's just is, the beginning is, of it. I mean, so is there a sizable ghost club <laughs> in, <laughs> in Salem? As a general rule, anybody who has any sort of unfinished business, no matter how big or small, winds up in the dusk in our fiction. So you will interact with other ghosts in the environment as you make your way through the game. Well, given the fact that he is a detective, I mean, can he finish other people's business? So, actually, it's a good question. We're seeing a side quest here. Oh. Now, this girl oh, was... Uh, was it was part. It was perfect timing. <laughs> so she's been murdered, and she believes she was murdered by the uh, the elderly couple who lives across the street, uh, across the apartment, in the other, one of the other apartments. So Ronan, his natural instinct as a crime solver is to help this young woman out. So he's going to make his way over into the other apartment here in just a second. And when he does that, he's going to again use his abilities as a ghost to possess and mind read these people and to see if her suspicions are true. So he's going to pop into this guy, he's going to listen to what he has to say here. And again, you see the badge system there, right? And so every sort of investigation process that you do, you're awarded a badge based on your success or failure cases. And again, it's built more around rewarding the player than punishing them for so failure. Like, you're, you're, you're kind of saying, engage with this game yes. as much as you can. Yes, Don't absolutely. kind of speed run. Absolutely. You're, you're, you're way through that key story. Now, another option with uh, that, that, that gentleman he just possessed yeah. says you can look around. Yeah. I mean, will you find something rewarding by using all of the options or some of them completely useless or red herrings, I guess? Well, hopefully the mechanics we're building in the game will always have some use, even if sometimes it's a little bit of misdirection on our part. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, because I mean, once again, that goes back to the idea <laughs> yeah. of the detective that he can't make a mistake, he can give something far more importance than it actually deserves. So, as you can see, uh, if you heard the dialogue, uh, th this couple did kill her. They buried it in a quarter, quor uh, sorry, a quarry, not oh, long yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's a hard word to say for me. And so, by going back and talking to her, she's actually got some help to help her move on. So she's going to go and she's going to teleport away now, and hopefully, if she can make it out of the building, she'll find a way to the quarry where she can solve her unfinished business. So you do actually help other ghosts along the way as you make your way through the game. Um, because obviously they're talking to ghosts and it's unfinished business. I, how do you keep the game from just slipping into something just endlessly morbid? Uh, well, Ronan himself is pretty sarcastic. He's got a pretty funny sense of humor. I mean, he's never trying to crack wise, but he's just very sardonic and he's very sarcastic. And he brings a little bit of levity to the experience that way, so it doesn't get so wrapped up yeah. in its own so, I mean, I, 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 I can see this becoming yeah. thoroughly grim. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What's, what, what's happening right here with all the designs on the wall? So what you're seeing here is something that right now we're calling ghost graffiti. This young character, she'll actually play a pretty critical role later in the game. She leaves these small messages all over the place. So you're seeing that Ronan is not only ha way more powerful than he thinks he is, because he didn't even realize that he was doing that. It's a hint at sort of the, his growth potential, but it's the start of one of the larger side quests in the game. Oh, okay. Oh, so, so, so you kind of see this game is structured by having that, that, that main plot and sort of branching stuff, yeah. and then all just kind of floods back in this idea of sort of, I guess, upgrading Ronan? Yeah, we, we do have a, so when he starts the game, obviously he's, a, he's very brand new to the dusk, right? So he's not really aware of all the things that he's capable of. The longer you spend in the dusk, the more powerful you kind of become as a result. And you're seeing some of the early signs of him growing as a, as a ghost. We'll get you, you'll see that he gets experience at some points in the game. That allows you to upgrade even further some of the abilities that you get naturally as you progress through the game. So is he now sort of working on a side quest that was established by that graffiti? That was the very start of it, but what I'm doing here is actually just showing you Poltergeist. You do have some very limited ways of interacting with the living world. 
by turning on the stove, you're actually drawing this woman over here going, what's going on? I don't get this. Oh, okay. And this is, this is simple poltergeisting, right? But you actually use that mechanic to solve some of the more complex puzzles later in the game. Because you still need to figure out ways to manipulate the humans. Absolutely. To get them to do the things that you can't interact absolutely, with. Absolutely, absolutely. So we're going to move up to the third floor now. I'm going to assume this is a bad thing. <laughs> yeah, that's a bad thing. It's a bad thing. Yeah, we got a bad thing. Um, so, I mean, what is it? <laughs> so, <laughs> an interesting thing about the dusk is it's not a place you want to be in. You don't want to be trapped in this space for very long. Uh, if Ronan doesn't solve his unfinished business, he'll turn into something like that. All ghosts ultimately succumb to the dusk and are corrupted by it. So this is you know, this actually has an interesting kind of linkage to the plethora of Japanese <laughs> horror movies about you know people who died angry and went around ruining everyone else's life in the in the meantime. <laughs> so it, our creative director actually is Japanese. Uh, Shio oh. Kawasan comes from Square Enix Japan. Well, you know, so in, 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 in all fairness, that is just embedded in, in certain myth mythologies in East Asian culture. Oh yeah, it's, not like it's just embedded for, for for pop culture. But the great thing about it though is is when he brought the concept to us uh, at, at Airtight, you know, it, the the notion of what a ghost is is sort of universal, and so there's this almost immediate common language that we were able to work from as we sort of blend some of the more Western lore with the Eastern lore there. But in truth, Shio Kawasan just really likes the concept of ghost regardless of its cultural origins. Well, I mean, it, it comes, what, what comes with it is a sense of mystery, a sense of, 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 of the unknown, but there mm -hmm. is, there is that sort of humanistic treatment in this that like, hey, you know, things you do in your life will have some type of mm -hmm. ramification oh, in yeah. your afterlife. Oh, absolutely. And I think the storyline really emphasizes that fact. So here okay. you can see yeah, him using some of his combat abilities. You saw him jump inside uh, of that police officer. Mm -hmm. uh, while you're in ghosts, the demons can't see you. So you can use that to sort of make your way around them. I'm using pass through here to get into this apartment. And now I'm gonna use another ability called, uh, we're calling teleport right now. Teleport allows you to move really quickly and silently. So again, you get behind them and then you can destroy them when they're not expecting it. If you try to attack the guys head on, they will instantly kill you. Well, not instantly, but what's, they're very dangerous. What's kind of the, the explanation in the fiction of how they're getting rid of these evil ghosts? So right now, Ronan, we, what we've got is, is when they're unaware, that basically their guard is down, and you can actually get inside of their essence and then rip them apart from the inside out. So the, uh, the, because they have no soul left, they're weak in that sense. All right, so do, do they evolve? Or do enemies like that change throughout the game? I'm, because of his limited interactions, I'm trying to see how you can expand, yeah. I guess, that aspect of the gameplay. Yeah, so uh, yes, we do have multiple demon types in the game, all of which have very unique behavior patterns. So you can't just get comfortable in the space. Every time you come into a new combat environment, you have to really think about what types of enemies are there and what your best strategies are for overcoming them. And then, addition to that, things like teleport and possession, uh, will prove critical as you build strategies to take out the enemies. And are those things, will, will those powers, um, will, will, will they expand throughout the course of the game? Yeah, yeah, they will, they will. You'll be able to upgrade those, you'll get more as you progress. We were th you're showing three here, pass through, possession, and the teleport, but there's several other ones that you're going to get as you make your way through the game. Is there one that's just annoy people? <laughs> you sit there and just push an apple off a table, something like that. <laughs> so we're now in the apartment where, well, his death, was initiated. Yeah, yeah. So the first thing you're going to see here is I talked earlier about his ability to actually restore memories back into the dusk. So he's going to do that now. And as he analyzes the, the body, he's going to be able to, uh, um, there he goes, he's going to be able to uh, um, find more information about it. So in this instance, yeah. he knows it's a killer and he's looking for someone or something in this space, right? And so what he does is because of that, he gets this impression and he gets a bit of a flashback on what's going on. Got it. Right. So there is his killer. Yes. And so you're going to keep moving around the environment. You're going to find critical information that you hopefully can use to put the pieces together. So another really important thing that you're going to discover here uh, once he inter interacts with the baseball bat is a little bit about uh, what the killer's capable of. So in this particular instance... Oh, okay, that's an aluminum bat. Yeah, okay, yeah, 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 exactly. So it's a metal bat that was bent. <laughs> So he's got a, 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 a huge reserve of strength that is abnormal for a human being. And so that tells you a little bit about the killer as well. So every time now that you're solving one of these puzzles, you can get more of a flashback. Yes, yes, actually, you, you're building towards the conclusion towards it. You're trying to fill in the pieces so that you can make a deduction about it. So in terms of the entire game structure, I mean, you, you, I imagine when we have several sort of long sequences like what we're seeing here, yeah. how do you sort of keep them all together for the typical length of a game yeah. without 
I'm thinking like the killing on AMC, where it's like, sure. how many red herrings? How many, oh no, but there's more. <laughs> I mean, that, that, that's a tricky thing to pull off. Well, so uh, the story is based on uh, a story concept that our creative director came up with, and he worked really closely with our lead writer, Doug Van Horn, to sort of put the pieces together and make sure we don't stray too far away. Right. So what we do is we keep the story very focused on Ronan's death. Right. And then if you choose to participate in the optional content, there'll be other case files that you can start to explore. There's other side quests and, and collectibles that you'll be able to discover in the environment. So uh, that way we keep the story focused, we keep it very mindful of what's going on so we don't find ourselves out in the weeds too much. Right. But we give the player tons of other stuff to do. Because you do want to draw out that world. Okay, yeah. so now it looks like there's somebody else in the apartment. Yeah, so this is, this is a major turning point there for the investigation go. because right now you're just trying to figure out where your killer's gone next and you find this memory of someone else was in the apartment that you didn't know about when you were here first. So you're getting a flash of this. And what this clue tells you is that there was a witness. But the, the challenge of it is, is that you have no idea where she's gone to. So you have to keep investigating to find the next piece. And if you go over here, you see an, a, a hint at another ability that we're gonna, be, it'll be more fleshed out in later builds, is the, you get this psychic imprint off of this photograph here. In what way? How, how, well, I, I just know it plays out. So now we know where she's gone to. So you have okay. So like a, a, a photograph somehow retains something yep. else that, that's pretty absolutely, the story. absolutely. So like the like the dusk is almost a memory of suffering. Other sorts of imprints of, of things come, and you can get connections from that from that as a result right. because of your connection to the dusk and these objects that are connected to the dusk dusk as well. I mean, how challenging was it you know, to take what are kind of essential gameplay elements, kind of like how do you find out where the yeah. girl went, yeah. and then trying to kind of refashion them inside the idea of this ghostly world? Uh, it, it's, it's a complicated process. <laughs> I, mean, I was wondering if there's, if there's like ghost steam. It yeah, just sits yeah. there and it's just like, all right, this is how it works in, in, you know, in the dust, in the dusk. Yeah, <laughs> well, the, that's actually, we, that's the first thing we did is what are the rules of our world, you know? Uh, because if you don't go in with a clear lore, you're going to find yourself getting very confused. Well, then it. you're just going to make it up as you go along. Exactly, For something like exactly. this, that you're just going to violate the entire sanctity of the, of, of, of the narrative. Yep, yep. All right, so... So we've completed the deduction, and the, the minigame actually had the player putting the pieces in order. So he's reconstruct, reconstructing the timeline. So the player successfully does that, and now we get the full replay of what happened here. All right, let's take a look. So oh, also, how, why is it that Ronan has no memory of what happened? So that's that's a little bit misleading here, but he actually does remember what's going on. The thing is, is it was an extremely emotional situation, and sort of in the heat of the moment, he comes back to the environment to see what he missed, right? And so he's going, okay, I need to figure out if there's anything I missed. Everything happened so quickly, there's bound to be something that I didn't catch. Right, right. so it's not so much... So it's kind of, he's, he remembers some of this, but the player... You know, yes, yeah. exactly. So he's going, okay, I need to get back here. I need to figure out what I missed so I know what my next steps are. Because he doesn't know where the killer went after he was murdered. And he went out the window. <laughs> well, Ronan went out the window. <laughs> so this is the really critical part, right? This, the insight that he's gotten is that the witness, whoever she is, has actually gone out this window. So now he has a lead. He knows a, a direction. He can follow her, and hopefully, if she's still where he thinks she is, he can catch up to her and maybe, maybe find a way to get more information from is, her. Is the girl in danger at this point? Does does the is, is the killer aware of her? That is. And uh, I get the shrug. That's a bit of a storyline. <laughs> <laughs> so, as, well, as you can see, he's going to head towards the window now. This is his best bet: going and following her tracks. Right. So. Uh, I mean, is what we're seeing in this demonstration indicative of, like, well, obviously there'll be greater challenges, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. we'll, are we, are we going to see most of what we saw here sort of reapplied in various ways, or do yeah. you even expand more gameplay types? So, yes, the, the themes here is, I, I believe, a core pillar of our product, because we have this really rich storyline that we want the player to sort of discover on their own through these investigations. But you're also going to see things like traversal. You actually make your way through the world of Salem, uh, you can revisit the different places you discover and take on side quests that way. And you obviously saw the combat. You're seeing a little bit of a hint here of the graveyard. This is a beach area that you see later in the game. So there's tons of different places to explore and discover, lots of different environments. All of it is very critical to what happened to Ronan.
Well, um, I, I, I gotta say, once again, it's established itself as is a very unique, and I'm very happy to see people trying to do what I love is the, is the detective genre. So, cool. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. thank you so much for your time. Absolutely, it's a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Remember, in real life, you can't just reload your last save. Take your insurance game to the next level. Visit statefarm.com. <laughs>